Hey everybody and welcome back to the Motor One YouTube channel and today we are in beautiful Moab uh, right before the Easter Jeep Safari and as ever Jeep has brought out a buffet of concept vehicles and we're going to show you some of them right now. A lot of different electrified products this year, uh, lifted, everything in between, a ton of cool concept cars like always so let's go check them out right now. This is the Jeep Magneto 2.0. So you'll remember we drove this truck last year in its first concept form, and now it is a brand new second edition, maybe getting a bit closer production. I'm gonna tell you right now, we have done a full first drive review video with this on our sister channel, Inside EVs. That is gonna be linked in the description below. But right now, let me give you a brief walk around. Magneto 2.0, a lot more power. Last year in its first form, that just under 300 horsepower. This time, 625 horsepower and over 800 pound-feet of torque. Uh, it has an 800 volt architecture and I believe a 70 or 77 kilowatt hour battery that is placed in three separate areas on the Wrangler for better weight distribution. So when the EV Wrangler eventually goes in a production form, of course it's not going to have battery cells stacked up high, but you can see under this neat plexiglass right here. Come a little closer right here because I also have to show you this. It's still a six-speed manual transmission with an electric car. It's just so cool to use the clutch pedal, shift between the gears, uh, and you can see just how that worked again in our first drive video on the Inside EVs channel. Otherwise, this is a full-on Jeep Wrangler still. It's been upgraded to 40-inch tires, beadlock capable wheels. We have King off-road specific racing shocks, coilover suspension. It has all the kit to attack off-road. So this is the obvious step to the future for Jeep when it will become an all-electric brand. So this is the Jeep Magneto 2.0. All right, friends, it is time to meet Bob. And Bob is this concept right next to me. That is a nod to the method of bobbing a truck. This is a Gladiator, but they've chopped it by 12 inches. Now, of course, the Gladiator is known for having somewhat of a long rear overhang, which makes uh, uh, angles off-roading a little bit more difficult. So one of the ways to rectify that issue is by chopping the bed, in this case 12 inches shorter. That puts this in between a Wrangler and a Gladiator. It's sort of this weird middle ground that currently doesn't exist in production form, but here's a concept. It's quite cool and might I say looks really, really neat. We have some additional off-road kit added to this thing. Carbon fiber fender flares, which look awesome in this, I guess, three-tone paint scheme, orange, black, and then this matte silver on the side of it. Huge 40-inch tires, beadlock capable wheels, coilover suspension, and massive king shocks as well. So fully kitted out to attack anything off-road. Bob, believe it or not, one of my favorite concepts here today. So we have to spend some time on this one because if this isn't proof that Jeep likes to have fun, then I don't know what is. Look at this super ridiculous, happy fun monstrosity. This is a Vietnam War era ambulance that's been converted into a beverage truck. When I mean beverage truck, I'll show you all of that stuff back there. There's room for a keg. There's a huge bar back there. This is a ridiculous truck. And it starts right here with the numbers 392. And that of course means there is a 392 V8 shoved inside of this thing. They took the powertrain from the 392 Rubicon and decided that this needed to be the benefactor of that. So obviously it has way more power than it needs. Jeep says this is drivable, functional, it'll crawl. Um, there's modern suspension, coilover suspension, of course, power going to all four wheels. Super neat Resto mod. Let's check out the specifics. So when you're inside and the roof is fully up, there's room for even taller people than me to stand. There's a couple inches of headroom, so six footers and above have no problem in here. The back of it, of course, has Jeep Performance branding, which is something that they do on a lot of their different Easter Jeep Safari concept cars. And then you have the Insignia with 1941. Really neat graphic just behind the bar. Yes, the bar. Cabinets all here, beverage unit number two and beverage unit number one. Uh, the Jeep designers were telling me that this thing is really designed to go to different shows. They've used it so far as just a vehicle to hand out t-shirts to people and that kind of stuff. But there is a fully functional tap, two of them. So when you feel like it, you just open these up and they can lift these out and there's room for a full size keg in there because this is what we like to see in our concept vehicles. So if you're going to a Jeep event at any time in the future, you might see this and they'll be able to serve you a cold one. How cool is that? All right, friends, so I just walked over to this and decided I wanted to shoot a little, you know, a little walk around tour with it, show you what it's all about. And two very nice people from Jeep said, okay, it's time to drive it. I went, what? 
it's not exactly something I was coming here today to drive. But here we are and uh, the pressure is on. I've had a two minute once over on what to do with this. So it should just be lift up and that should be drive. But we're gonna find out at the same time. And we are now driving, a, it's basically a building over historic rock shelves where cars about, I don't know, <laughs> less than half the, I mean a third this size have been going all day. So eh, there's no such, oh, there goes the door. <laughs> That's a good start. If any of you went on Indiana Jones as a kid, this is Indiana Jones in real life, which is something I didn't know I would ever get to do, to be honest with you. That was just the smallest of rock shelves. And the body roll on this, I don't even know if body roll is an appropriate term. Going straight ahead on even landscape, the movement back and forth is just profound. You have to get pretty deep into the throttle to get it to move at all. We're gonna listen to our spotter as we go up. A little obstacle here. Surprisingly easy so far. Four low, easy on the gas. And we are up. Straight through here? Okay, thank you. <laughs> oh man. You know, the, that V8 can get pretty unruly if you put your foot into it. So the fact that it's this tame and four low and that you can kind of just cruise along. Oh man, this is just about the coolest thing, isn't it? Headroom is not a problem in this vehicle, I'll tell you that. I'm kind of going through my normal checklist that we do to review vehicles on the fly. Um, not much in the way of amenities. We're not talking heated seats, ventilated seats, massage, anything like that navigation, audio, really anything. But um, <laughs> you, you get the racket of metal cabinets behind you opening and shutting, which kind of just adds to the charm. One more little rock shelf right here. Well, I have a new front runner for coolest thing I've driven all year, I gotta say that when we do our end of the year story of our uh, favorite and least favorite cars. Can't forget this one. Well, that's probably a good way to end our, uh, our video today, driving all of the concepts from this year. Because this is just about as ridiculous as it gets. Uh, if you want to see us do more ridiculous stuff like this, please subscribe to the channel. And as always, thank you so much for watching.